Look, as I've said before, we are in a race uh, for time against this virus. The more quickly we can vaccinate folks, the quicker we end the pandemic and save lives. Now, uh, today I, I come before you extremely disappointed uh, that we were lied to with uh, plans of the administration to release reserve doses that were to be the second doses of the vaccine. Um, I was informed by General Perna today that there is no federal reserve of doses. They anticipate that every second dose will be delivered, but it'll be delivered in the future off of the supply chain. And so there is no influx of doses. Contrary to a call we had with the Vice President, the Secretary of Health three days ago, where they informed us we would be getting an additional quantity uh, available to the states, uh, uh, there um, is, is not that additional quantity available for any states. So we have a little bit more visibility into the quantities of vaccines we'll be getting in the short to medium term. I'll go through that. We were led to believe just a few days ago the federal government was going to release their stockpile of second doses. That would have equated to about three weeks supply and one week for Colorado, about 210,000 uh, or so doses. Uh, and that was uh, unfortunately not true. Um, and we were ready to deploy it right away. And now we know that it simply doesn't exist. Uh, we're gonna continue to do everything we can to deliver the doses that we do have effectively and efficiently. Uh, we anticipate about 70,000 per week. And I'll walk you through a little bit about our, what we know about the supply and, and what we're expecting. So we are now uh, January 18th to 25th, 24th. We know, we know very well uh, what we're gonna get this week, next week for next week. Uh, they have informed us it's 34,700 Moderna, 35,000, I'll put an M by it, 35,000. 100 Pfizer. Now we do something to these numbers. These two, these numbers equal 69,800. However, what we did early on in Colorado, in recognition, in recognition of the clinical fact that there are six doses in every five dose vial of Pfizer, and 11 doses in every 10 dose vial of Moderna, is that we actually correct these numbers, and that leads to 77,900 and 50 doses next week in Colorado for us to use. Um, we, 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 buy, and we hold all of our provider partners accountable for using every single dose from the vial and measured with precision. And we've been fairly effective at recognizing numbers that are very close to those numbers. The next week, January 25th to 31, uh, we are expecting a, a, a similar amount. In fact, uh, we're, we're expecting about the same amount. So there'll be another week of that. After that, we are expecting the amount to go up. Again, uh, we have been misled before, uh, and perhaps there would be unanticipated changes in the supply chain. But for the weeks of February 1 to 7, February 8 to 14, February 15 to 21, uh, there, we are expecting the supply in about the 90 to 100,000 range. Now, we are also hopeful at some point in here, there could be FDA approval of Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, that would be the third vaccine, a one course vaccine. We don't yet have visibility into quantity. Uh, we don't believe it would exceed the 30 to 40,000 a week of Moderna and Pfizer, uh, but we will be able to incorporate that in when it's approved and when we know the quantity. <clears throat> Uh, we feel that with these quantities, we can still achieve our goal of 70% of people 70 and up inoculated successfully by the end of February. But the more doses that we get sooner, the sooner we can start 65 and up, the sooner we can start teachers and bus drivers and, um, and others that work on the front lines. And I'm very hopeful that the Biden administration's goal of 100 million doses in 100 days will be a reality. And here in Colorado, we are ready to deliver those doses and use every dose every week. I wanna take a moment to provide an update on phase 1A of our vaccine distribution plan. We talked about January 15th as the goal for the state when we would largely be done with 1A. I'm proud to say that we are. Doesn't mean that there are some healthcare workers that might trickle in, but by and large, the prioritization is 70 and up, 70 and up, 70 and up. Uh, that started two weeks ago in many areas, but there were still healthcare workers that needed to be vaccinated. By the 15th, by today, 
our highest healthcare risk healthcare workers who work in COVID wards, who work around patients who have COVID, <clears throat> those who want it have received at least one dose. Many are already receiving their second dose. And also the majority of skilled nursing uh, will have gotten their first dose. Uh, and we're very excited about that. <clears throat> to date, 64,500 first doses have been administered to frontline healthcare workers. Uh, that's about 85%. 48,000 second doses have been administered to frontline healthcare workers. We're also working very closely with the Federal Pharmacy Program, which partners with CVS and Walgreens to vaccinate staff and residents at skilled nursing facilities and long-term healthcare facilities. That program has gone slower than we would like. That's the one part of the vaccine distribution that is directly under federal contract out of the state control. But even with the challenges they faced and with us being on top of them every step of the way, Walgreens and CVS have now administered 97% of doses to skilled nursing homes. That means 203 of the 209 skilled nursing home facilities in our state have already gotten the dose. They're gonna finish 100% for both skilled nursing facilities and long-term care facilities by January 30th, the second dose by the end of February. We wanted to, to make them go faster. So we to provide protection sooner, we offered to administer doses to 30 long-term care facilities. We said, let us work backward, let the state take on some. So far, one of those facilities has accepted our offer. 11 are keeping with the federal contract and program. We're also reaching out to the few facilities in our state that did not get scheduled with CVS or Walgreens. Uh, the state will administer those doses when the facility agrees for a date for the residents and staff. And we have four uh, long-term care facilities that have taken us up, that we've gotten a date, staff, residents will get that. <clears throat> I'm proud to say that in addition to those who live in nursing homes and senior living, tens of thousands of seniors that have already gotten the vaccine, we're close to 40,000 members of the general public, age 70 and up, that have already gotten the vaccine here in Colorado. And that number is going to increase rapidly now that that is the focus of very close to 100% of our doses that are available. available. Um, vaccines are our path back to the Colorado that we know and love. And uh, we're very excited about the progress that we've made so far. And let's go to the next slide. Um, oh, not, not that one, two slides back. I think it was the one that showed, there we go. This is where we are with the first doses in Colorado. So we've received 300,000 uh, 100, uh, and we have used already in people's arms 242,000. So that leaves about 58,000. They will likely all or almost all be used by Sunday by the time we get the next doses. There's a lot of clinics scheduled this weekend. The, the, the remainder of them almost uh, all going to 70 and up. Again, there's a few healthcare workers here and there uh, now that are, that are still getting them. Uh, but we have one of the highest rates of successfully getting the vaccines into arms of all the states in the nation. We're very proud of that. We wanna continue that. That being said, when you look at these quantities, 77, 79,000 a week, we have 530,000 Coloradans over the age of 70. So you can do the math, and that is very frustrating for folks who say, what about my aunt? What about my grandma? What about my grandpa? Because some will get it next week. Some will be getting it into February. There's simply not enough that we are receiving to do everybody next week. If we had the 250,000, we would have gotten them all out in one week. It would have met uh, half of all the 70 and up within a week. Um, but we're still confident we'll meet the 70% of 70 and up by the end of February. With these numbers, that's a baseline. We were very conservative in setting that wildly important goal. We will achieve that. But uh, we, there's no question that um, this is a disappointing development that our vaccine supply will stay in the parameters that I indicated earlier, around uh, 70 to 80,000 a week this week, next week, going up to 90 to 100 for a few weeks. Again, with the possible addition of Johnson & Johnson when approved with um, uncertainties, the exact numbers there. Um, so look, um, to make the vaccine work, it's gotta be used. Um, that's why early on we established that all of our provider partners Hospitals, community health clinics, pharmacies have to use every dose within three days. Uh, there's been cases where if they didn't, we, we just uh, transfer it to another partner who will successfully get that into arms. That's part of the secret to our success. Uh, I expect that we'll use essentially every first dose that we have in Colorado by Sunday, Monday, which is fortunate because that's about when we start getting the new ones. Monday, Tuesday is when we get the next week's dose uh, at about 77 to 79,000 doses uh, for next week. 
Look, the more vaccines we're getting administered, the more that we protect people, it starts that protection clock. They need the second one 21 days later, 28 days later. The Johnson & Johnson is a one and done. If, they, if and when that is approved, it's a single vaccine. Uh, and we're obviously very excited about that opportunity as well. Um, the more vaccines are administered, the quicker, the more we receive, the more we can get back to jobs and growth and our way of life. 